Ah, I think it's time to begin now. Um, well, hello everyone. Um, welcome to this talk, Collectors in the Wild. Thank you for, for coming. I, I just learned this morning that, that we were live on YouTube, so hello also to the million people watching us live on YouTube. <clears throat> So that's one million and roughly five hundred, <laughs> hundred, not hundred thousand people watching this code. Collectors in the wild. Uh, this talk is all about collectors. Uh, first question we may ask ourselves is, why should we be interested in collectors? In fact, collector is not an API in itself. We, I'm going to talk about the collector API, but if we check the JDK, uh, we more talk about the stream API and not about the collector API, it's just a, a sub-API from the stream API. And we could say that it's kind of left aside. Uh, there are books about streams, articles about stream. In fact, if you check YouTube for a stream tutorial or this kind of thing, uh, I, I did that last week and I found 7,000 tutorials on the stream API, more than we can watch in a lifetime, of course, and only less than 500 about only about collectors with the name collector tutorial. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of left aside. Uh, what? Why should we be interested in collectors? Uh, I think I think there are many good reasons for uh, of that, uh, and this is this is what I would like to to talk to you about this uh, this afternoon. It's in fact a very powerful API. Uh, maybe not as easy uh, to use and to understand as the stream API, but basically everything we can do with streams, we can do it with collectors in probably a, a, a more powerful way. And this is what I would like to talk to you uh, about today. Uh, my name is Jose. I, uh, I live in the Paris uh, area. I work as an associate professor at the university in Paris, and I also uh, have different open source uh, development activities, and I work as, a, as an independent uh, contractor also in the Paris area. I'm a Java champion, great, and have content on several several things on, on the internet, uh, including GitHub, uh, SlideShare. I will publish the slides of this talk uh, probably tonight or in the next following days, and YouTube, where I try to 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 uh, <laughs> to keep a list of of the talks I've given uh, um, everywhere. Uh, in a in a in a list in a in a playlist on YouTube. And I, I also have courses on Pluralsight, and I also write articles in Java Magazine among among other things. All right. If you have questions or if you want to uh, to comment or whatever, uh, what about using this Twitter hashtag? I know that the, all those rooms are really big, and the people on YouTube they won't be able to show up in the room to ask questions. So if you have questions, if you use the this hashtag, I will do my best to to monitor the. This hashtag, even in the next few days or few weeks, and uh, well, and uh, chat with you, and so they answer the question and the comments. Right. <clears throat> so this is this is a, a first uh, collector pattern. I have a, a list of movies basically. I stream it, flat map to get the actors, collect using a grouping by, pass the function identity, counting, then take entry set dot stream, take the max, and get a result. This is the typical collector pattern we are using when you are just writing collector stuff. It's not necessarily very readable, not necessarily very maintainable in the long run. It's not that hard to write once you get used to the API and what, once you, you understand how it works. But rereading it to modify it or whatever might not be that easy. And this is a simple pattern. This, this code does just a simple thing. Uh, very soon you can write much more complex code, like this one. Basically this is one line of code. If you check, there's an only one semicolon at the very end of it. It's finished with a get, because in fact it returns an optional, so the get comes from the optional. Uh, this code is, is both hard to write and very, very hard to read. I have only one comment about it, which is a quotation by Brian Goetz that you probably know. Do not give bugs a place to hide, right? And I think that in this kind of, of code, there are many, many places where bugs can hide. So yes, it works. No, don't write this kind of code. 
It's a very powerful API, even if it's very easy to write unreadable, completely unreadable code with it. Oh, and this is picture time, sorry. And sorry for the guys to YouTube, thank you. Thank you very much, have a good day. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so it's very easy to write unreadable code with it. So it's part of this talk to try to show you how to make this code readable. All right, so let us quickly browse uh, through the agenda. First, I will make a quick overview of the Stream API. Who is very, who knows the Stream API very well in the room, please? Yeah, that's a fair amount of people, I'd say 30%. And who uh, never wrote any kind of Stream code uh, in his life? Ah, still a few hands, right. Less, less than a person. <clears throat> you raised your hand, did you? All right, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> So, uh, and, and then we'll jump in the Collector API because this is really the main topic of this talk. We are going to use existing collectors and see how we can extend them, how we can tweak them and stuff like that, how we can make them readable. Ah, this is an interesting topic. And then we are going to create new collectors and new collectors by using the, the available APIs and also by creating API, APIs basically to compose collectors, which is, I think, one of the the, the interesting things that we can do uh, with collectors. So yeah, first of all, a few words on stream. So as you may know, a stream is always, this is a crash course on stream. This is a deep dive. Last year it was called the university session. So I guess we would have beginners in, the, in the, the Java language in it. So I, I, I kept this idea of going from, from the beginning. So, so a stream is a, basically an object that connects to a source. Uh, we can define operations on the stream. There are two kinds of operations, intermediate and terminal operation. We're going to see examples of that. Some of the terminal operations may be collectors, not all of them. Uh, there are others. And uh, a collector, as an object, can take more collectors as parameters. We can kind of nest collectors one, one in another using the downstream collector mechanism that we're going to see. So a stream is an object that connects to a source of data and watch the data flow, flows uh, through itself. There are no data inside a stream. This is very different from a collection object. Collection object, think of an array list or a hash set. There are objects inside the collection. It's not the case in a stream. A stream is basically an empty object. The statement I'd like to make is that every kind of treatment that we, every kind of processing that we can write with the stream API can be written in that way, stream.collect and pass a collector as a parameter. <clears throat> and this is what I'm going to show you today. Why is it interesting? We may ask. Because if we can do that, then this collector can be taken as a downstream collector for further processing. This, this is what's, what's behind that. On stream, we have intermediate operation. The first one, of course, is the mapping operation takes objects of some kind and returns objects of a different kind. Think of a person and the name of this person. The second intermediate basic operation is the filtering operation. We take a stream of objects and we're going to remove elements from that stream because they do not match a given predicate that we give as a parameter. So here we only keep the blue squares on this nice little example. And the third operation, basic uh, um, intermediate operation, is the flattening operation with the flat map method. Uh, think of objects that have relationships in the, in the sense of one to many uh, relationships. So here we have squares and each square has a relation to triangles. The flattening of this stream, in fact, will create a stream of triangles from all the relationships with the uh, from from all the objects in relations with the the squares of the of, of the of the inside stream of the upstream let's call that so all, all the objects in relation will be flattened into one big stream uh, one after another if i have uh, for instance a blue square with no triangle in relations so the the list or the the relation is empty then it is going to create nothing in the downstream right and this is a mechanism that we're going to use later in this, uh, in this talk. So those three operations, map, filter, and flat map, I told you it was fast, right? It's almost done. <laughs> uh, they do not need any kind of buffer to work. 
for mapping, I take a person, get the name of that person. It's just straightforward. For the filtering, it's the same, and for the flat map, it's the same. It's not the case of all the, the intermediate operations defined on the stream API. For instance, if we take the sorting of element, we have a sorted method on the stream uh, interface which just sorts the element of it. Uh, you see that to sort the elements properly, we first need to see all the elements, to put them all in a buffer, and then we have them all, sort them, and begin to produce the result. So this stream object, the, the sorted stream, has to have some kind of internal buffer to, to, uh, to keep all the objects uh, it cons it's consuming. And the same goes for the distinct operator. The distinct operator on will only let uh, through the objects that have not been seen yet. If an object is seen twice, it's not transmitted twice, it's just only transmitted once. So I, I need also some kind of buffer inside that stream to keep track of the objects that have been seen. Right, so both those operations, distinct and sorted, need a buffer to store all the elements uh, from the source. So they are different from the, from the map filter and the flat map. And I've, so they fall into two categories. The first one I call the stateless operation. They do not need to keep track of any kind of state. And the stateful operation that need a buffer to work, that need to keep some kind of internal state of what they are doing. And I've got two other methods, uh, also intermediate on the stream API, called limit and skip. Uh, that will count the elements. So, so this time it's not a buffer, it's just a counter that also needs to be... To be uh, to be kept uh, during the, the consuming of, uh, of all the elements. So the limit, keep the n first element, this is very precise, it's not any, any n elements, it's only the n first elements of that stream, and the skips, skip operation will skip the n first element, just the contrary, as the, as the limit um, operation. And that's it for the intermediate operation. Now we got terminal operation, operations and the first thing you you need to understand is that only a terminal operation will trigger the processing of a stream so the stream will will begin to consume the data from its source when there is a terminal operation on it no terminal operation no consuming no data processing made whatever for instance on this example i have a stream of movies first i filter those only the movie released in 20 in 2007 then I flat map to get the stream of actors that uh, played in those movies. So I have a stream of all the actors that played in a movie in 2007. And I want to get the title, and this will not work because it's a stream of actors and not a stream of movie. <laughs> all right. But since it is just a, a, a succession of intermediate operation, uh, in fact, nothing is done in that stream. The, the map will return immediately and no data will be processed. If I want to really process data, I need to call a terminal operation on that stream, for instance, the for each method, that will uh, print out the result here, the, the title of the, of the movie. How can I tell an intermediate operation from a terminal operation? There is a very good trick for that. If, an, if a method on, on the stream API returns itself a stream, then it's intermediate. And if it returns anything else, including void, then it's a terminal operation. Right. Among the terminal operation, I've got a, a first batch for each count, max, min, reduce, and, and two array. That will consume all the data from the source of the stream. To compute a max, for instance, I need to consume all the data from the, all, all the elements of that stream to find the max of all this data. I put the counts in light gray because there is a, an optimization in the count method that sometimes don't, does not consume any, any data to, to compute the result. I will not go into those, uh, those details. And there is a second batch of terminal operation, uh, which are called, by the way, short circuit operations, uh, all match, any match, non match, find first and find any, that do not need to consume all the elements of the stream. If I do some stream find first, give me the first element that is a positive integer, for instance, uh, once I have one, I do not need to consume the rest of the stream. I can, I can just stop this, this consumption and, uh, and do something else. <clears throat> so this is how the terminal operations uh, work. 
And I also have special cases uh, on, uh, on those two methods, max, min, and reduce, because they can return, instead of a result, uh, in the form of an object or a number or whatever, they can return an optional. And an optional is a special kind of object. We are going to, to see optionals at the, at the, in one of the last examples of, uh, of this talk. It is used to handle the special case of empty stream. What does it mean to take the max of an empty stream? Well, it doesn't mean much. So it returns an optional that is going to be empty. You, you can see an optional as a wrapper object, in fact. And the difference between this wrapper object and the integer wrapper object is that an optional can be empty, whereas the, the, the integer necessarily has uh, an element in it. And by the way, I, I put the link here on a very good talk on YouTube. Now, you YouTube's guys, do not go and watch that, that link, that, <laughs> that talk just now. Do that later by your short marks with uh, one hour only an optional with all the patterns you need to, to know and to understand to, uh, to use these uh, optional objects. Right, so let us have a look at the first collector because of course one of the last terminal operations I didn't talk about is the collect method. Uh, probably the most seen pattern uh, of the collect method is the following, get a stream here of strings, I filter, I only keep the, 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 the elements that are not empty, which is the contrary of what is written on the slide, put the result in a list and I'll get a list of strings that are not empty. I guess that everybody saw this pattern at least once? Yeah? All right, that's almost half of the, half of the room. Right. And if I change this, this code just a little, I can, I can just return a set instead of a list, just by passing the collectors dot to, dot to, set, uh, to set object. Right. I have another one, the joining collector, that will join all, all the strings of the stream into one big stream with a separator. We are going to see that uh, in a minute. All right. Oh, yeah, demo time. Fine. Ah, I love demo. Everybody loves live coding? Yeah? Who doesn't like live coding? <laughs> Three people. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> All right, so I got this, this guy. Is it big enough? Yes, I think it's big enough, right? Okay. Um, I set up some code already because I, I don't want to lose time writing um, easy code. I've got a list here. And I need to put my glasses, right? Oh, much better. I got a list, uh, a list of uh, articles taken from the web. Each article is known uh, with uh, his author. Here is an author, here is another author, here are two authors, and the title of this article here. Let me put that a little bigger. And I also have the, the year this article was published. And I've got all that in a text file, and this text file is like 120,000 long, so this is the total number of articles I have in this text file. And we're going to play with this text file, because the stream API is about processing data, and, uh, well, this is, this is data, this is not just a, a toy example. Okay, the first thing I can do, for instance, is just... So, uh, in the background, I got a, an article class, okay, with all the methods to decode this, uh, this, uh, this text file. And among them, I have a read-all that is just going to read all the lines of this text file and create a set of article. And the article in itself is just a plain Java bean with an inception year, a title, and an article type that we are not going to use in this example. And there is also an equals and a hash code method as any kind of Java bean we can examine. The first thing we can do is, for instance, take this article, create a stream on it, okay, AZ, and count the number of elements we have in it. Let us put that in a variable and print out this variable. Great. Run this code. So we indeed have this amount of articles, like 120,000, something like that. We can, um, what are we going to do with it? Yeah. We can, for instance, uh, select the, the first year uh, the, the year of the oldest article. So since uh, what I want is a, is a stream of, uh, of year, I can map this article in its inception year. So now I have a stream of integer and takes the mean in that stream of integer 
getting the comparable and since those are integer which are comparable get directly the natural order comparator okay and since this is a mean it returns an optional so I need to call the get method on the optional class see this is the get method of the optional class and this will return the minier oops of that of that file print out the result and I think I've got a bug in this file because the answer yes is 9020 so I'm going to filter the article just to remove the article which have a buggy inception year so I just want to keep the article with an inception year greater than 19 uh, oh, oh. run the code <coughs> And the, the right answer is yes, not T35. I can do the same for the max. Let us just do the same for the max. Here I just need to change here for the max. And this is the max here. Print the result. And this is, and this is going, oops. Great, and this is going to give me the, the result. The fact is, all this code here can also be written using collectors. You see, here I just called terminal operation directly on the stream API, but I can also call collect collectors.counting, which is a collector, okay? On the mean, I can also call, I'm going to comment out this, collect collectors dot mean by and pass the same comparator comparator natural order or is it I don't know comparator natural order here and do the same here with the max by I'm going to copy paste this comment out this max copy paste this and text the max by and you see that it works exactly the same. It returns the same, uh, the same values, the same objects, uh, etc. So I have this kind of duality between what I can do with the stream methods and the collector. And I can go one step further. If I have, uh, if I take this article, the, this stream of article, I have a very handy method called summarizing int, but it's only available on the stream of numbers. And in fact, if I map this, I'm going to filter, uh, yes, I'm going to f do the same filter here. So let me just copy paste this, All right? And uh, this time I'm going to map to int the result with the same method, by the way, article get inception year. So instead of having a stream of integer here, I have an int stream, which is not the same object. And on this int stream, I have a summary statistics object it returns a <clears throat> an in summary statistic object, which is, by the way, implemented with a collector. And in this statistic object, I have directly, let me run this code again. I have directly, uh, in one pass over the data, this is what is interesting, the count, the sum, the mean, the max, and the average of the, of the, of the ints I have in my stream just in one pass over the data. And even for this one, I have a collector for that. Let me just write this here. Again, correct. And the difference is that, in fact, with the collector, it's even better. You see, I've got those three summarizing int double on long method. I'm going to take this summarizing int since I've got a, a stream of, of, of uh, an int stream. And this summarizing int, Take the mapping function I have here as a parameter and it returns the exact same summary statistics. Oops. Oh, what did I do? Summary statistics object. Let us put this here. Statistic 2 and here. So, whereas this summary statistics here is not available 
Where is my mouse? Here. It's, not, it's only available on int stream and not on stream of t. This collector summarizing int here is available in th through the collect method, so available on the stream of t. So it's a little wider as a, as a, as a use case to, to have it. So you see that everything I can do with the, with the stream API directly, I can also do it with the, with the collectors API, which is very nice. I told you about the collectors the joining. We can just do something with it. Articles dot stream. The collectors the joining only works on streams of T. So I need to map this using a mapping function. Article dot get title, for instance. Uh, I'm going to use a trick here to filter only the article articles released in 1960 because I, I know that there are only two. This is the reason. And I'm going to collect those in a collectors.joining and pass uh, a separator as a parameter. This is going to return a string directly. Uh, articles 19, sorry, 1960. Great, and print out the result. And if I run this code, <coughs> you see that in 19, uh, uh, yes, it's not exactly that. In 1960, I have two articles that have been released. The title of the first is The Pernicious Influence of Mathematics on Science. Wow. <laughs> and degree of difficulty of computing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this, this joining collector that works on a stream of string allows for the joining of strings using, uh, using a separator, which is, uh, which is nice. Okay, those were the examples I wanted to show you just now. Let us go back to the slides. <coughs> So we saw uh, the, our first collectors, min by, max by, joining. Uh, we haven't played with the tool list, but don't worry, we are going to do that in a, in a very few. Probably one of the most interesting collector, most widely used collector beside the tool list collector is the grouping by collector. The grouping by collector is there to create histograms, basically, uh, maps as histograms. Here, what do I do? I just regroup strings of character using uh, their length. So if I take this stream of uh, strings of characters, apply this grouping by, the grouping by collector in itself creates a map, right? This, this is its job. Uh, it takes a function, a mapper, as a, as a parameter, which is called a classifier. This classifier will be applied to all the elements of that stream. And, uh, and the, the, the type returned will be the type of the key of the map. So since this string.length uh, mapper returns an integer, the key of the map will be, are going to be integers. Oh, and that's one more picture time. Hello, Stephen. Hey. How are you doing? You should say hello to the people on YouTube. <laughs> okay, Stephen Chin, everybody knows Stephen? I guess so, yeah. Uh, not only photographer, you do that very well, but you have other talents too. <laughs> All right, so the, the keys of the map are the return type of this mapping function. And when I just do grouping by and pass this, uh, this classifier as a parameter, all the elements of that stream, uh, which have the same value uh, returned by this classifier, will be put in a list, will be gathered in a list. This is how the grouping by uh, works. So if I have... Uh, a stream of uh, the, the following streams. I've got three different values for the length of, uh, of, every, of every string of characters. So three will be associated to the list of 1, 2, 6, 10, 4, 4, 5, 9, 5, 3, 7, 8, etc. Now the nice thing with this grouping by is that I can pass a second collector as a parameter to it called a downstream collector. And this downstream collector will be used at the following in fact, all the lists of the values, or the values are the list, so all those lists are going to be streamed themselves, collected, and this downstream collector will be passed as a parameter to this collect call. So this downstream collector acts 
as some kind of post-processing of all the values of that map. So, for instance, if I want, we already used uh, several collectors, including the collectors.counting. So, if I want to use all, the, if I want to count all the strings uh, associated to, uh, of length three in that map, all I can do is pass this collectors.counting uh, collect, oh, sorry, this collectors.counting collector as a downstream collector, and uh, all the lists of strings will be replaced with. Uh, the counting, which is long, it's not the size, and my map of integers on, on list of string will become a map of integers and longs. And this is exactly this, this kind of thing that, that is done. I just pass the st uh, string dot length as a, as a classifier, and, and then this collectors dot counting as a post processing. Right. Oh, demo time again. Great. I love demos. I'm going to change. Um, I'm going to yeah. I've got I've got several files and all the demos will be held in several files. Let us get rid of this. Yeah. So I still have my set of articles, and what I would like to do is count the numbers of articles per year that I have. Number of articles per year. This is the map I want to create. So this is a job. So this is this is an histogram. So this is a job for the grouping by collector. So let us take my list of articles, take the stream on, on that, collect the result, collect, collectors dot grouping by. The classifier, I want to regroup my article per year. So the classifier is just article get inception year. And if I don't do anything, this is going to be a map of integer because this is the type of the year, and a list of article, because this is what... <clears throat> need to fix the import, right? Because this is what the grouping by does, okay? And then if I want to count the elements of those lists, I need to pass the right downstream collector, which is in fact collectors.counting. Now it does not compile anymore because it's not a list of articles I have here, but it's the result of the application of the collectors.counting on each of those lists, so it is along, right? And this is the number of articles per year. Okay. What I can do with it, what I could do with this map, th this map in itself is, is just my histogram, and probably what I want to do is to get the, the year with the most articles in it, that, that saw the, the biggest, biggest number of articles published. So what I need to do is, in fact, further process this map. I do not have a stream method on the map interface, so the trick when I want to extract a max, and the stream API is very good at that, is just to get the entry set. This is a set of map.entry of the key and the value of the map, get the stream on this one, and extract a max on that stream. I need to pass a comparator as a parameter of these maps. Comparing, I need to understand that the elements of that stream, let, let me just do this real quick, put this in a variable. You see that this is a stream of map entry of integer and longs, since this is a, an entry set dot stream that, I, that I've been calling. Right. <clears throat> so on that stream, I'm going to extract the max. Let's get rid of this one. I'm going to extract the max, and then uh, I need to pass the key extractor to create this comparator. And since I want to compare things uh, with the long here, it's the entry that get value that I should need to. I got a minus here. Okay. That that should be a calling. Now, I called a, a max, so this returns me an optional. So on that optional, I'm going to call the get. Let's do some formatting. And this is uh, the best map entry of integer on long that I get, which is the uh, number of articles per year. This is, in fact, the max number of articles per year. 
And if I run this code and print out the result, I want to run this code and not the previous one. <clears throat> I can see that in 2004, I had 7,600 uh, articles that have been published. So this is a very classical way of processing histograms. Uh, get the entry set, then the stream, uh, then stream, and do something with it since I am in the world of the, of the stream API. Okay. Now, the problem with this way of doing things is that um, I know that in 2004 I have 7,600 uh, articles that have been published, but what, I, what, it's probably, what it may be hiding is the fact that I might have another year with the same number of articles. In fact, what I got is the first max and not all the maxes uh, from that. If I want all the maxes, let us take this code again. I got, I got several, several ways of doing it. Uh, maybe the most obvious of the ways should be, could be to argue I'm going to sort this using, using the long and it will work and print out for, for instance the first 10 and uh, if I see the second max then I will have all the maxes but probably the, the most interesting in fact is not uh, taking the max now from that stream is do another collect and in fact invert the map what I'm going to look for is uh, the number the list of the years with, with 76 100 articles published. So, in fact, it's once again a job for the collectors dot grouping by. I need to be careful because I am on, on I am on that stream, right? I'm going to copy paste the type here. I am working on that stream here. So the elements of that stream are the entries here. So the grouping by that takes a classifier. In fact, the element here is an entry. And I want to group by using the value of that entry instead of grouping by the key. So here I'm going to do that. Entry dot get value. I do not wish to further process the stuff, so it means that for all the number of articles I will have the list of years that saw this amount of articles published. So this is my map. If I put that, sorry, oops. If I put that on a variable, the type of the math is a bit, is a bit ugly, <laughs> to say the least, because I group by the longer, and of course all the elements of the stream that are the map entries here have been gathered in lists, so the value is in fact this guy, right? But now that I have this one, I can, I'm going to comment this out, I can do the same here, take the entry set dot stream on this map, Pass the comparator, and now what I want to compare, get the max by, is the max by key and not by value. So, get the key here. And now, this is not a map um, I have at the written type, but a map.entry, which is uh, the best key value pair with all the years with this amount of articles. So, it used to be max number of article numbers, and now it's all the maxes, can call it all maxes number of article per year, print out the result to check if I have other years. Okay, this time I have only one year which has this amount of article. But at least I am sure that there is no other year with this maxes. With, with this trick, with this map inversion, I have all the, all the maxes uh, on the criteria I have, uh, I have established. Right. <clears throat> the problem is that when I kind of write this kind of code, the readability um, is really getting lower and lower, right? Who thinks that this code is readable? Yeah, 0% really. <laughs> and I, I, I must agree. So we are going to, to try to improve the, this kind of thing. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. So, we have the number of articles, uh, yeah, so th this, this is how to create a map using grouping by and then extracting maxes uh, using this entry set dot stream and further processing the stuff. And if I want to have all the maxes, this map inversion, which is a, a nice trick to know. Suppose now I want the number of articles per author. 
I have a relationship between articles and authors. So for each article, I know who are the authors of that article. And I want to do the opposite. I want to have the uh, knowing one author, I, I want to know not the list of articles, but the number in the first step, the number of articles uh, this guy uh, wrote. So let us see that on an example. I have two articles here, Gent and, Gent and Walsh, who wrote uh, Beyond NP, the QSAT phase transition, and Gent, Us, Prosser and Walsh, and Morphing, combining something. This is the list of articles. In my list, in my stream of articles, I have the first article, A1, and then the second article, A2. A1 is in relationship with Ghent and Walsh, and A2, Ghent, Us, Prosser, and Walsh. Now, remember that when I have this one-to-many one relationship, uh, the, the, the flap map uh, operation is there to help me. So what I can do is, in fact, flat, flat map this stream uh, using this flat mapper going from the stream of article to a stream of author. And if I apply this map, flat map operation, what I get is in fact for the first article, Ghent and Walsh, and for the second article in my example, Ghent, Us, Prosser, and Walsh. Right? So we see that Ghent appears twice in that stream, and Walsh also appears twice in that stream since they've written each two, uh, two articles. So this is once again knowing how many authors, uh, sorry, knowing how many articles each author write is in fact a job for the grouping by once again because if I group by this into an histogram, what I want to know is that Ghent appears twice, Walsh appears twice, etc. And this is a grouping by. Uh, the key is in fact the same object as the object I have in the stream. So my classifier is just the identity function, and I do not want the list of the, the people by people, the author by author. What I want is just a count. So I just pass the collectors, the counting as a parameter. And this will do the trick. All right, let us see that. <clears throat> I will once again move to a new file. OK, so let us take my articles, stream that, flat map the results using, uh, oh, I cannot use the method reference here. So each article knows uh, how many authors we have, and those authors are in a list or a set, I don't know, but I can call the stream on that. So now what I have is a stream of authors, and if an author wrote two articles, it will appear twice in this stuff. So I can just collect the result using these collectors not grouping by. The classifier is just the identity function and the, the post-processing, the downstream collector, is the counting. So if I type this code, this is a map of author and long, uh, number of articles articles per author. What you're looking for? This is a map, right? And if I want to further process this map, for instance, to try to guess, or try to, to analyze uh, which author uh, wrote the most article, I, I'm just going to, to use the exact same code as the previous one. What did I wrote it here? This entry set dot stream max comparing by value. Sorry. Okay. Entry set dot stream max comparing by, by value. And this is going to return me a map entry, right? Of the type of course of the of the map. And this is the author with the most articles. Let us print out the result. Yeah, this is the previous code I've just run. So let us run this one. <clears throat> so Mr. Chen wrote a thousand and almost 1400 articles in his life, which is quite nice. 
uh, at least in this file. And you see that that th this is this is another pattern that I can th that I can use that in fact counts the elements I have in a stream. Of course, if I call the distinct on the stream, it, it will not work anymore. Uh, so I should not call the distinct on that stream. Uh, so it, it, it just it ju it's just working like that. And you see that on this stuff, I have in fact used the exact same code to post-process that stream here. And this should be a hint. Somehow we'll have to put this in a method or in something or whatever and, and refactor it to, to use it and to give some kind of uh, a business meaning to it. Uh, where am I? So the max. I could do the same uh, as the as the previous one. That is, invert the map to get all the maxes of the algo. I'm not going to to uh, to do this stuff. I'm going to uh, to um, to carry on with the yeah with the with the slides. Okay. So we saw examples uh, on the, of uh, of streams. Uh, we saw uh, of uh, collectors. We saw basic uh, collectors. Uh, counting, min by, max by, etc. Uh, we saw the grouping by. We, we didn't see the two list, but we are going to see it. Don't worry. Uh, now, what I would like to to show you is to understand how, in fact, a collector uh, is working. Uh, and in fact, it's working on three basic operations called the supply, the accumulate, and the combine operation. And underst understanding that will allow us to go one step further. Uh, to, to use finishers and, and to create our own uh, collectors. When I create a list, so this is the most basic list I can create, in fact what is happening, this streamer is going to produce strings of character, A, B and C. The collector is going to grab all those elements, will first create a list and will add the element of that stream one by one to those lists to produce precisely an array list, in fact, with the element of the stream uh, in it. So if I, so here this collector has two basic operations. First, create the list. And second, take a partially filled list and the element of the stream and put that element in the stream. If I want to write some code to do that, in fact, I need a constructor to that list, which is called in the collector vocabulary, the, sub, the supplier. And it, it, indeed, it is a supplier, just this lambda expression. And the second operation is consists in adding a given element of that stream to that list. And it's written in the form of a B consumer that takes a partially filled list and an element and accumulate that element in the list. And when all the stream is consumed, then list, this list can be returned. It is the finished list of the collectors dot to list uh, collector. Now it's not quite done because, as you may know, the stream API supports parallelization. And what is how is parallelization working in the, in this kind of context? Well, I have two calls on my CPU or two CPUs: CPU one, CPU CPU two. Two partially filled lists will be created on the two calls of my CPUs. First collection, second collection. And at the end of the day, I need to merge those two lists in just one using the same object collector. So in fact, I need a third operation that is going to merge two partially filled lists on each individual CPUs of my, uh, of my computer. So in fact, the collector is created on three basic operation, atomic operation, the supplier, the accumulator, and another B consumer that takes two partially filled lists and that will merge them together into just one list. And this third element is called the combiner. So to create lists, I could also call this collect method with those three basic operations, a list new, list add, and list dot add all, and it works. In fact, the collectors dot two list is just a wrapper on these two lambda expressions as we're going to see it. And by the way, this if, if I want to uh, to further abstract this kind of code, I can also call the collection.add and collection uh, colon, colon add all method, uh, method references for that list. 
And if I want to create a set, you see that all I need to do is in fact to change the supplier of this, of this method. The rest of the method, of the method is the same. So this is how collectors work um, in a certain way. Now, suppose we also use the collectors.joining uh, collector that joined strings together. Suppose we, need to, we want to implement this collector in this exact program with a supplier, a com an accumulator, and a combiner. How are, we how, sorry, how are we going to do it? Well, it's string.stream uh, filter. This is a filter we, we, we used. Uh, uh, collect. I pass the supplier, which is apparently the creation of a new string. The, the accumulator, which takes a partially filled string, and the string I want to add to it. And I have a concat method, so okay, let us just call the concat method. And then a combiner, in case I want to go parallel, where well, two partially filled strings are going to be merged together, and the concat method can also be used for that. The problem is that this code, of course, as you may see, does not work at all. Why? Because inherently the string in Java is an immutable object. So when I call final string .concat s, it does not add this s passed as a parameter to the, fi to the final string itself. It just generates a new string, concatenation of those two strings. And my B consumer uh, doesn't work like that. My B consumer suppose that the, con the partially filled container, which was a list, has to be mutated by this, uh, by this uh, consumer. And since string is not a mutable container, this model does not fit at all for the collectors, the joining example that, that we saw. In fact, the, the, the model that we just saw works well only for mutable containers and not for immutable containers, and string indeed is an immutable container. How could I do that? Well, we all know that uh, we cannot mutate string, so we have another object for that, which is, of course, the string builder, or the string buffer, if you, if you want to use the string buffer. It's not exactly the same, but it kind of works the same. So I can write my code like that. And this time, this code is going to work because string builder is indeed a mutable container. The problem is that it does not return a string anymore. Okay? This code, in fact, returns a string builder. And my collectors, the joining, returned in the code we wrote a string and not a string builder. Uh, and a string builder is not an extension of a string, so it's just not just a matter of casting it. It's really a matter of calling, in fact, the toString method once this collect has been done to go from a string builder to a string uh, object. So, in fact, the collector is three operation supplier, accumulator, combiner, plus one operation that is called the finisher and that will precisely implement this two string at the end uh, of the collection. This finisher, in the case of the two list or the two set collectors, is in fact the identity function. And in many cases, this finisher is indeed the identity function, but not necessarily uh, all the time. And the nice thing is that once I have uh, uh, this finisher that is done, I have a special collector that allows me for the, for the, the passing of a custom finisher to, uh, to, a, um, to an existing collector, which is the collecting and then uh, collector. And we're going to use it in a further example. So let us do that. Um, I'm going to take this example, and in fact, I am going to take the, the previous example that we saw. Not this one, but this one. Where was I? Um, yeah. I'm going to copy-paste this here, and take it there, and in those imports. Thank you, can go away. And I'm going to just merge all this stuff here. And this is my map dot entry. Now that should compile. And remember, I told you this is this is a pity because this post-processing here is always the same. We we thought it three times, in fact. Uh, 
And we should try to put it in a function or something just to make things more readable. Now, <clears throat> how, can I, uh, how can I do this? Uh, in fact, I'm going to keep this as a map. This was nice as a map. And, uh, sorry, call this number vertical per year, just like that, right. And I'm going to put this, can I put this, this in the method? Yes, I think, no, I can't. Um, I'm going to put this in a variable and extract that in a method. I think this is this is nice. So what is this method doing? I just made a, a method extraction, right? What is this method doing? It takes a map as a parameter, okay, and return a map entry and just does that. This this is by the way, this is this is a map. I'm going to call this a map, right? This is a map. So this method takes an object and returns an object. I can model this method in fact with a function. This is what I wanted to show you. A function is in fact a method that can be passed as a parameter. This is why lambda lambdas have been put in Java. It takes this type as a parameter and returns this type as a parameter. Okay? I'm going to call this function function for the moment. Okay? And what does it do? It just take a map, and does this with it. All right, and this is, this is my function, and of course I'm going to call this function my finisher. This, I just use this kind of uh, method extraction to, to use that trick. And then uh, this collector here, I'm going to put this in a variable, by the way. This is a grouping by, yeah, grouping by is nice. This is a grouping by, and I'm going to further, to add the finisher to this grouping by using the collector we just saw in the slide, which is called collecting and then. So this collecting and then will take this grouping by and take this function as a parameter. And if I want this to work, I need to first declare this function, of course, pass this finisher as a parameter. <clears throat> and this is, uh, I'm going to call this collector collecting and then. You see it, it's just this collecting and then collector, just as that, I'm going to add some kind of indentation here. Just add a finisher, a special finisher to this collecting and then here. And now, if I pass this collecting and then directly to the collect here, it does not compile anymore because the type has changed, I have directly my map entry that is, that is that is computed directly. So in fact, this post processing, this entry set dot stream dot max dot get blah blah blah, has been uh, integrated in a function here. In a, in a function here, uh, which is uh, which is this one. I could keep this function because this is uh, in fact uh, a max entry by. So let me. Sorry, by like that. So it, let me just uh, call it call it like that. I could just, uh, in, in fact, I, I could put this function. I'm going to get rid of this because I do not need it anymore. And I'm going to get rid of this static method here also. And in fact, this function, I'm going to put this. This is what I'm going to put in a, in a, in a factory method. This is, in, in fact, this function compute the max entry by here by value since I'm just I'm just calling the comparator a comparing entry entry by value. Okay. By the way, I've got another um, comparator here which is directly defined on the map entry interface, which is this one, which is nicer to use. And what I would like to do now is, is just try to, uh, to, to make this, this function generic, okay? 
So I'm going to give uh, abstract type to this, to this function and I'm going to use a very dirty trick here. Okay. The integer became the name of a parameter. And now the nice thing is that I can rename it as a t and this long as a v. Oh, maybe it should be a k in fact because it's a key. And it does not compile because this here this max is expecting a comparable stuff so this v uh, should be in fact comparable. So this should extend comparable, not computable future, comparable of super v like that. And now it will compile fine. Okay, so you see that it's max entry by value. Uh, and by the way, I could also put this in a variable, <coughs> in a comparator, and further call this in a method. Um, I expect this stuff to take. Um, is there a function? Where did my function go? Oh, yes, it's here. Right. I'm going to, to declare this comparator outside, get the lambda here and return this lambda, but this time parametered. So it's a max by, and this time I pass a comparator as a parameter. See? <coughs> and I can inline this reference. Yeah, that, that's, that's better. So I've got a first factory method that takes a comparator as a parameter, and then the second factory method uh, that doesn't take anything and that in fact creates the comparator inside uh, to call it. Um, and this, so it makes this finisher uh, much easier to read. Here I can inline this finisher uh, there, max entry by value. By the way, this grouping by A, I could also put, it, put this in a, in a factory method, right? What about this is this is just a grouping by and counting, right? Because I'm counting there, right? Grouping by and counting uh, and just pass yes, I would like to pass this as a parameter in fact. This is a function, this is this is my classifier. And what I, what I would like to do is just pass this classifier as a parameter to this method here. This is my classifier. I can get rid of this line, do some indentation. My grouping by and counting will just take this classifier here like that. And if I want to make this stuff uh, more uh, generic, I can say, all right, this is my article. This, those are my integers and longs. Ugh. Okay, maybe we should be a little more worried with, with this kind of thing. Okay, so you see that this, this grouping by, and now this grouping by, I can also uh, try to inline that. Okay, so my uh, uh, collector collecting and then just became this stuff here, which is which kind of, so I can get rid of this code now, which kind of, make things, I hope, a little more readable. I can print out the result and you see that if I run this code... Ah, thank you. I really was needing this. Okay, this is the kind of error the compiler uh, does does see when you execute the code, but when you're in your IDE, the compiler doesn't see the, the compiler the, the compiled error. So this is what just happened. Okay, so you need to, to just help the compiler by telling him that yes, this is a, a map entry of, of k and v. And you see that the result is the same as the previous one. The difference is that somehow I have, uh, with, with this kind of variable extraction and factory method extraction and stuff, I, I, I could write some, some more readable code. This is the basic uh, way of making code more readable, trying to, uh, trying to extract things in, in methods, in variable, uh, that, that, uh, that have explicit names. Right. Let us go on with the slides. So, what I did in the previous 
case uh, is uh, compute um, uh, compute the max article published in a year and remember that if I wanted to have all the maxes I'd say okay this is the number of articles and I'm going to put the list of the years associated with this article. But since I used a, a grouping by with no further processing I ended up with this kind of ugly map, the long which is the number of articles and instead of having a, a list of integers uh, which would have been a list of the years I had a list of entry of integers and long. But really what I'm interested in, it's only a list of integer, which is the list of years. So how could I further process this map to, to get this result? Well, in fact, what I want to, to change is this entry of integer on long. I want to make it uh, just a plain integer and to put that in the list. So this is clearly a job for a map operation, changing the type of a variable and the nature of a variable is in fact a mapping in the stream API. So what I need is a function that is a mapper and that will just take that entry and does entry.getKey. So this function is not very complex. What is maybe a little less easy to do is to integrate that in the, in the collector API itself. In fact, it turns out that I have a mapping for that. Uh, uh, sp sorry, uh, I have a collectors for that. Co collectors.mapping. The collectors.mapping uh, takes a mapper as a parameter, which is uh, the function we just wrote, and has to take a downstream collector. This collector.mapping does not exist without a mapping collector. So it will take the elements of the stream, and if it's a downstream collector, it's the stream, remember that the stream are in fact the values of a map or something. It will map those elements and put the result in a list. So it's basically exactly what we need to do. So we are going to do that on the example. Ah, another demo. All right, where was it? Uh, sorry. Somewhere, this is the C example author with the most article. Was it this one? No, it was not this one. It must have been this one. <coughs> Yes, it was this example, the all maxes article per year, which was this this guy here. So I'm going to take this. Um, put the result here. Please. Yes, I already have people here. <clears throat> okay, I need this map to work. Was there? Oh, in fact, I need all these guys. Okay. Okay, I got everything I need here. At least I think so. Um, let us just uh, let us just run this code and make sure it works. <coughs> it should. Okay, so I have this this uh, this guy here. Now, what I did here is just take the entry dot get value there, and this get value is precisely uh, this this map of entry on long on long here. And this is exactly the value I want to post-process, I want to map, because this map of entry and integer of long is not what interests me, in fact, what interests me is just the key of this stuff. So instead of doing this, I'm going to call uh, this collectors uh, dot mapping uh, here, pass this entry dot get value, so it will open this entry there to get uh, the integer, so it's not get value, it's get key. 
sorry I'm messing things up this is the classifier I don't want to touch this one all right what I want to do is to post process the value so instead of getting the entry which is this stuff get only the key entry dot get key and the good news is that the type of this stuff has been lost and put the result in a list of course it does not compile anymore but what I expect is this block to compile yeah great so since I changed the, the type of this stuff I still have a list but thanks to this mapping that opened this entry to get the key I do not have a map entry here I only have an integer that is hopefully exactly what I need so now when I run this code again I got rid of this entry here 2004 and the number of articles published uh, during that stuff I only have the, the, um, the year in the list which is exactly what I uh, wanted to have I can do that using a second uh, a second trick which is remapping the remapping the stuff um, I'm going to to copy paste this code again because the second pattern is also interesting and this was uh, the the first code I wrote that return I'm going to put this in a variable <clears throat> the map entry with the list of map entries in it okay so I'm going to oops. I'm going to comment out this code here get the result and in fact on this entry set dot stream here I've got a stream okay of those guys map entry set um, blah 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 okay and what I got here is just it's just uh, the, the, the max of, of this stuff but in fact I can collect this this in, instead of using a, basically what I have here is a stream of map entry so it's a map in the form of a stream and to remap uh, something to, to, to create another map the, the right pattern to do that is to use the two map collector the two map collector here I'm just going to take the entry and I'm not going to change the key of that entry so it's just an entry dot get key okay and in the value if I get the value oops entry dot get value okay the value is in fact this stuff and I'm only interested in the key uh, here so I can just ah, um, sorry get value this, this is my list I'm going to stream that list and map the stuff the, the element of that stuff is another entry which is this one okay so I'm going just to get the key of that that uh, that entry which is the integer which is here so now I've got the stream of this stuff and if I want to put it in the list again all I need to do is collect it and put the result in a list great so now I've got another map which is the right one which is this map in fact uh, this map here map that is here so I need to further take the entry set dot stream and get the max and since it the, the key has not changed I can just get the result like that so let us put this result uh, in a variable and see that I have the same the same result which is indeed the, the same thing so I have two possibilities here either use this mapping post-processing of the values directly when I create the map with my grouping by or if I already have the map and want to remap it use this trick here to change the type of the map with the two map collector in fact this two map collector this two map collector is, uh, is very useful especially to uh, to uh, 
create, uh, to, to remap, uh, to change the type of a map. You cannot cha really change the type of a map. You can take a map and create another map with a different type. Okay, and this is really the job of the two map collector. The two map collector kind of looks like the grouping by collector. Uh, the first function you provide uh, computes the key of that map, and the second function you provide uh, uh, computes the value of that map. Now, the biggest difference between the two map and the grouping by is that the two map should not be creating duplicate keys. If it is the case, then you will have an exception because it doesn't work like that. The grouping by expect that you are going to create duplicate keys and we gather the, we gather the values associated with those keys in lists. The, the two map does not expect that. It expects that you do not generate duplicate keys. So this is the main, uh, the main trap when using the, the two map collector. Now, since in this, in this pattern, I am sure not to have any duplicate keys because I take a map and reset.stream and in that case, I do not change the key. I only change the value. So it's just a kind of a value mapper uh, on a map. So, uh, so you have the guarantee not to, not to generate the duplicate keys, which is great. And with this, I think that we're good for a little coffee break. What do you think? Yeah, coffee break? Okay. What about we take uh, like 15 minutes for coffee break? Is it enough? Yeah? Okay. So let us carry on at, uh, at 3 p.m. Okay. In the second part, we'll see uh, filtering, flat mapping using characters, joins, just like in SQL, and composition of characters. Thank you, and see you in uh, 15 minutes. Oh, by the way, uh, still have the phone? Yeah. By the way, if you have questions, I will I will check the the Twitter uh, hashtag for questions, and we'll begin with questions. So welcome back. Um, yes, there was a question on uh, on on uh, Twitter about the status of find first find any and the min max reduce. Uh, in the slide, I said that min max reduce were in one category and find first find any was in another one. Uh, meaning that to compute a mean, a max, or a reduction, you need to scan all the elements of the stream. You need to consume all the elements uh, of the source the stream is connected to. Whereas in the find first or find any, once you have found one element, you're good to go, you can cut the connection to the source. This, this is the, the, the difference between those two uh, categories of, of methods. Now, both of these methods, min, max, reduce, find first, find any, uh, written optionals to handle the, the special case of empty streams. So this is not what is making the difference between those uh, those methods. Right. I hope it answers the question that was asked on Twitter. Right. Uh, so let us carry on. We have some nice things to do, to, to see uh, again here. I would like to, to talk a little more about types uh, and show you the collector interface. I, I let a blank line at the bottom of it because there is one more method that I'm not going to, to talk much about, uh, but, uh, but which, is, uh, which is there. So a collector is in fact typed with three parameter type. Uh, welcome to the wonderful world of generics. <laughs> yeah, a T, A, and R. And if we want to go further in this talk, we need to understand the status of those types, unfortunately. Uh, as, I, as I told you a few in the first part, a collector is created on a supplier, an accumulator, and a combiner. And there is this finisher that can be the identity function, and that in many cases uh, is indeed the identity function. First, a collector connects to a stream. Uh, this stream is going to produce elements of type T. So the first type of a collector is T, the elements of that stream. Now, remember, for the joining collector, we began to put these elements of type T, which turned out to be a string, by the way, in a string buffer. And this is the type of A. A is the mutable container in which I'm going to gather all the elements of that stream, in which I, I'm going to accumulate all the elements of that stream. So this is the type of the supplier. The supplier is a supplier of A creating the mutable container. Now, if this supplier creates, in fact, the mutable container that is returned by the collector, which may be the case, for instance, for the collectors.toList uh, collector, then A and R are the same, which, in our example, will be a list. 
But in the case of the string builder, remember that the finisher is in fact the two string method of that string builder. So A will be the string builder and R will be the string written by the two string method. So those are the type T, A and R. <clears throat> and we are going to see examples of them. So I hope it will make things a little more clear for, for everybody. The last uh, methods I have is a set of characteristics that returns uh, uh, metadata. We could call it like that, metadata on the collector. And among them, there, there is a, a flag uh, which is called identity finish, uh, which tells the, the finisher is the identity uh, function or not. So a collector will tell the stream API Yes, my finisher is the identity function, so you do not need to call the finisher method to, to end up the processing. So in a nutshell, T is the type of the elements of the stream, A is the internal type of the mutable container, and R is the type of the final container. Now, we, we could say that A is some kind of leaking the internal of the character uh, interface to the outside and indeed it is the case we should not have access to A from outside the collector since it is really an implementation detail of the collector uh, itself. Often we have A equal R which is the case when the finisher is the identity function but it's not because A, A equals R that the finisher is the identity function. For instance, if you want to collect your data in a, using a grouping by, but instead of re returning a map, you want an unmodifiable map, at the end of the building of the creation of that map, that's the grouping by, you may want to call the just collection.unmodifiable map to the result. In that case, A will be equals to, to R, but the finisher is not the identity function. So it's not necessarily the case. Right. Now, what is the type? What, what, the, what impact does it have on the type of the downstream collector? Let us take an example we already took, which is the grouping by of those, uh, this stream of strings. Uh, by, uh, we want to group them by the length of those strings. So the, the map we are creating is the, the map at the bottom of the slide. Three, three associated to the list of one, two, six, ten, etc. If I want to pass, so yeah, the, the, the grouping by uh, is a collector of type string, because it is a type of the stream this collector is consuming. We do not know the intermediate, uh, the mutable container in the middle, so let us leave a question mark and it will work like that. And since it is a grouping by, the type of the return container is a map of some keys and a list of some values. Well. Quite obviously, since the classifier returns an integer and this is the type of the key, the type of the key of the map will have to be the return type of this classifying function. So integer is the return type of the function passed as a parameter to the grouping by a method. And the list of the elements is the list of the elements of the string, so it has to be a list of t. But you see that this grouping by collector is in fact uh, parameterized by, by more type than the 3TAR because there is a map of K and V uh, in it. And now what happens if I want to pass a downstream collector to this grouping by? Why should, what should be the type of this downstream collector? Well, this downstream collector will have to consume the elements of the lists of the values of that map, of that map which are once again uh, strings themselves. So it's a collector of string, just to be able to consume those values. And the return type of this collector is in fact free. It just can be any kind of value. In the case of the collector, the return type is a long, since it is counting the element of that stream. And it will make the type of the overall collector grouping by string length, then collectors.counting. In fact, the return type will be a map of integer, this is the key of the map imposed by the classifier, and the value of the map will be imposed by the return type of the downstream collector. 
this is how things have been made in the uh, in the collector API. And by the way, I could just finish. I'm just going to finish an example I let uh, before the before the break. I think it was there. No, it was not. It was there. No, it was not. It was there. I wanted to remember. I wanted to parameterize this stuff, and I used this trick. I just I did that, okay, and passed the article here and the type of the map here, trying to parameterize all this method, and it didn't work. Why? Because in fact the long here is imposed by the collectors dot counting collector here, so it's not a parameter of the map of the of this method. The article of the integer and the integer R, because this collector can take any T here, produce a map of any K. This will just be the, the, the type of the function. So I can rename this with the T. The integer there here <coughs> with a K, I'm going to call it K because it's the key of the map. And it will return a collector that will return a map of K on long just because it has these collectors dot counting here. So this is just an application of, of the slides uh, I, I just showed you. All right, let us talk about intermediate operation. It may be a little well because collectors are inherently terminal operations, but they can in fact provide intermediate operation. And we already saw an example of that when we use the stream.collect.mapping function and downstream. Remember, we use that collector as a post-processing of our list of map entries of integers and long just to make them list of, uh, of integers. So I indeed have a collectors.mapping that does, that implements an intermediate operation of the stream API, which is the map operation. <clears throat> now, why is it interesting to have this kind of collector? Well, because I can use it as a post-processing in a downstream collector. Uh, if I did not have those downstream collectors, it would be completely useless to have those mapping uh, collectors. But in fact, it's, it's, I have them ju just, just to do that. And if a collector can map, then why wouldn't they be able to filter or to flat map? Uh, in Java 8, uh, it's not possible, but as you may know, Java 9 has been released uh, a few weeks ago. And in fact, we have the collectors dot, dot filtering and dot flat mapping uh, factory methods in the collectors uh, factory class. So yes, indeed, we can do filtering. It takes a predicate of T and the downstream collector. This downstream collector is mandatory since uh, it is an intermediate operation. And the same goes for the flat mapper. The flat mapper also takes uh, a flat mapper as a parameter which is a function that takes a T and returns the stream, and also a downstream collector, that is, and also takes a downstream collector as a second parameter, uh, that will take the elements of the stream and collect them uh, in some kind of uh, uh, other stuff. So those uh, intermediate operations have been added to the collector API in 9, and we are going to see how they've been added, because I think it's interesting to see uh, how those have been uh, have been implemented. Yeah, and it's another demo time, so let us jump to the demo. First of all, I would like to... Uh, all, all those factory methods I've, I've put here, I'm going, in fact, to put them in a factory class. Let me do that real quick. Uh, I'm going to put them... Uh, oops, got a load. <clears throat> yeah, here, util, <laughs> collectors utils, do I already have that? And I'm going to put all those three methods here to make sure, yes, so this is a collectors util class and it will be, I'm just going to put them some factory method to use them in other, in other example, uh, oops, sorry, uh, here. So it's just there to hopefully make things a little more readable, a little more readable. Uh, okay, so let us carry on with our examples. 
we are going to uh, what is the next <clears throat> yeah I want to get the article with the most authors right so how can I do that well it's very easy I need to stream uh, my uh, list of articles this is always the same beginning and I am going to uh, first of all remember that I have uh, articles that are buggy I do not want to take into account the article that have been released uh, prior to sorry get inception year prior to 1900 those those articles are, are corrupted there are corrupted data in my file it, this happens all the time so this is quite uh, usual to, to see that and what I want to do sorry I'm not going to uh, collect right now I want to take the max with the most authors so the article I'm going to compute the number of authors uh, with the size why isn't it oh yeah it's uh, I need to wrap that in a comparator sorry comparator comparing article get size and then get the result right and if I uh, uh, so this hopefully is an article article with the most authors I'm probably not going to uh, print out this, this article because I will have too many authors so what I want to do is just get the title and print the number of authors articles get sorry artic article with the most uh, I'm going to yeah to be easier like that article get authors and print the number of authors I have in this article okay let us read this read this code I don't have any collector in this code right I don't always need collector there okay structural DNA nanotechnology molecular construction and computation has been signed by 25 uh, authors <clears throat> right now what I would like to do is the following I would like to say all right I want the article with the most authors but for each year for each year I've got a certain number of years in my in my uh, stream in my stream of articles and I want for 1960 this is the article that has been signed by the most authors etc Basically what I saw is that when I have a, a processing that is modeled inside a collector I can take this collector, pass it as a downstream collector of a grouping by for instance and it does the trick. So what I would like to do really here is the following take my stream of articles, group by <coughs> so collect collectors.grouping by group by year so get inception year and then pass a collector as a parameter that unfortunately doesn't exist but this collector should in fact do exactly this processing here right if I can create a collector that does exactly that filter max and get uh, then I'm done I can just pass this collector as a downstream collector and I will have solved my problem. And this is this is all the point I think of the collector API. Being able to transform a stream processing in a collector processing to pass this collector as a parameter to a further processing, like in the downstream collector of this grouping by, for instance. So how we can we do that? Filter, we know that we have a filtering collector in nine. We do not have it uh, in eight. So well. This is this is Java Knight code, by the way. <clears throat> so this is uh, my filtering collector. It takes a predicate as a parameter, which is this one. Okay, and this filtering collector uh, takes a downstream collector 
that has to do the same kind of thing as the code that is here. And this is a max, and we saw that the max has a collector, collectors.maxby, at the beginning of this talk. So I, I can continue by passing this collectors.maxby. It takes a comparator as a parameter, so let us pass this comparator as a parameter. And this is it. Doesn't doesn't uh, uh, compile because I did not give the type of anything, so it just just code like that for for the moment. But we'll we'll have it work. And this is the get method. Remember, this is the get method of the optional object because this max by returns an optional object. So if I take this collector, the return type of this collector will be wrapped in an optional. So what I want to do really is to apply this get method from the optional object in a finisher. This is, this is in fact my finisher. And we saw that if we want to pass a finisher <coughs> as a parameter to a collector, it is the job of the collecting and then collector. So this is my max by. And then just call this optional.get. Yes, this is this optional, like that, and post it like that. I think I'm missing a closing parenthesis, which is here. So this is uh, the conversion of my stream API processing into a single collector API. Now, I need to find the type of this collector, and this is not the, the pleasant part of this kind of thing. It's a collector that is going to act on a stream of articles, quite obviously, because this is a grouping by, and this grouping by will create a map. The keys will be the inception here, that is the integers, those are integers, and list of the types of the stream this grouping by is processing, that is a list of articles. So this collector will be a collector of article. The mutation, uh, the mutable container inside of it, I just leave this mutable container blank because I do not really need it. And this one is in fact, uh, is in fact this guy. Is in fact this guy, is it? Yes, it is. It's also an article because what I have to what I have done here is model this processing with the collector. So it should be an article also. And this is my collector. And it doesn't quite oh yes, thank you. And now I need to import this class. Oh, it worked. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to put this. So this is my map. And this is the map I, I, wanted, I wanted to create. Okay. So by uh, transferring this stream processing into a collector processing, I just did that trick. Uh, uh, put all my data processing in a parameter, which is a collector, and pass that processing as a collector and as a parameter uh, to another processing. This filtering uh, a collector is available in nine. Uh, what I would like to do is just show you, as an example, how we can uh, create such a collector. I've got a collector because we're going to use that um, later on. I think I've got the collectors that you did get. I'm not going to, to do that, um, to do it like that. Uh, I've got a util package here with the, the utils factory class, collectors utils factory class I've just created a few minutes ago. So I'm going to create a new class in that collector, filtering collector. Let us call it filtering collector. It's nice. A collector that is going to implement a filtering. So we are going to, to, to implement this collector using directly the implementation of the interface and it will be a first example of, uh, of how to do that and we are going to, uh, to, make, to, to, uh, to do it for, for other cases. So this filtering collector is a collector of TRR, TAR, sorry. Those are the three uh, parameters type we just saw in the slides and it's going to implement 
<coughs> the collector interface of T, A, and R. Yeah. It doesn't compile because we need to implement the methods from this guy. Okay. So for the moment, it doesn't do much. It, in fact, doesn't work neither because uh, it will throw, it will happily throw no pointer exceptions. <laughs> Okay, uh, this filtering collector will have to take a downstream collector as a parameter because it's an intermediate operation, and all the intermediate collectors, so-called intermediate collectors, have to you to to be uh, connected to a downstream collector. So let us create this downstream collector here. Private collector T R R, and this is my downstream. I'm just going to call it downstream. Downstream. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to create a, um, a constructor to, to, to get it. Okay. And now, how does this stuff work? It's a filtering collector. So it's not changing the type of the, 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 the stream I, I am processing. So I am providing an element to, the, to this downstream collector directly. Uh, the supplier, in fact, what, what, what do I want to do with this collector? This collector is going to consume the elements from, the, from my upstream and is going to feed some of those elements to the downstream collector uh, provided. Um, so, in fact, it doesn't do much. Uh, I, I, could, I could just write it like that, you see? Just say, all right, the supplier is just the supplier of the downstream. The combiner is also the combiner of the downstream. Okay, the finisher is also the finisher of the downstream. The characteristics, get what, guess what? They are also the characteristics of the downstream. And if I do the same for the accumulator, <laughs> okay, I've got basically a no operation a collector it doesn't do anything. Just take the elements and pass them to the downstream collector. Of course, uh, since it needs to filter something, uh, I, I need to to change this kind of thing, and I need probably to have some kind of predicate uh, to do this. So let us get a predicate. I forget to to get this predicate. It will be a predicate of t. Since we are going to filter. Uh, the element of the streams we are connected to, and I'm going to add this constructor, this um, predicate to the to the constructor. Now it doesn't change any of those uh, methods apart from the accumulator one. Why? Because the accumulator one, remember, it's the method, the the process that takes an element from the stream and adds it to the mutable container provider. The mutable container is not provided by the filtering collector. It's provided by the downstream collector. If I want to collect in the list, it will be a list. If I want to collect in a set, it will be a set. If I want to collect in a map, it will be uh, put in a map using a logic that is provided by this downstream collector. So here I need, uh, uh, well, to write this, this uh, B consumer, right? A, so this is a B consumer of A and T. So remember, this B consumer uh, has a method except that takes two parameters. <coughs> Okay, so the first parameter is of type A, and A is the mutable container, so I'm going to call it container, just to remember that it's a container. And T is the type of the elements of the stream I am connected to, so I'm going to call this second element, uh, element. Okay. And what do I need to do, what do I want to do? Well, if I just uh, do this kind of thing, uh, accept container and element. What I'm just doing uh, is just passing uh, this container and this element to the downstream collector to say, hey, this is the container you've already partially filled. This is an element, do your job. So this is another uh, no op, no operation collector. And this is precisely this that I should be trying to modify if I want to do something. Remember, this element t, I want to transmit it to the downstream collector only if it's okay with the predicate uh, I have. So 
what I need to do is test this element against that predicate and if it passes the test then pass it to the downstream character and if it doesn't then uh, do nothing basically so this time if I write it like that I take an element if it's okay with the predicate I said I tell the downstream character hey put this element in your container and this is the way I should be writing that and if it does not, well, I do nothing, so this element will just be, um, be thrown away. And this is how to implement uh, a collector uh, in, 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 a collector um, in a collector framework. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not very hard, as long as you have a downstream collector to help you. Uh, because if you don't, then in this, in this method here, this is where you need to create the map of... Uh, key and list of values, etc. But this is the job for the downstream collector. As long as the collector you want to create is just a collector created on a downstream, it's very simple, very easy uh, to create. So I'm back uh, to uh, this guy. Sorry, not this one. Uh, yes, this one. <coughs> So I could, uh, this filtering collector, um, I'm going to put this one, yeah, I could have written in that way, oops, I could have written in that way, collector equals new filtering collector, pass and pass basically the content here, like this, first the predicate and then uh, the downstream collector. And you see that, yes, this downstream collector is fairly complex. It's a collecting and then, so it, it has a, a special finisher and a max by with the comparator, etc. But this is, this is uh, how it has been done. And if I, I I'm not going to, uh, to write all the map, I'm just going to, to take, oops, yes, <clears throat> the size of this map, run this code. And you see that, oops, ah yeah, of course. <laughs> and you see that this code is working perfectly well. I have no exception in the console. You didn't see it, right? <laughs> I guess you did. Uh, okay, but this, this does not come from the filtering collector. It comes from, uh, from some other things. So the first part of this, uh, of this let, 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 let me run this code again. The first part of this code worked, okay? So the article on the overall with the most authors was this one, with 25 authors. I took my collector, passed it as a downstream collector. Well, I modeled my, my data processing as a downstream collector and passed it uh, as a post-processing of, of the creation of an histogram, basically, and it did not work. Now the question is, where did it work? It worked in this optional, that get method here. In fact, I had an empty optional in my in my uh, in my stream. So what happened? I created a data processing pipeline and tested it on a huge database of more than 100,000 articles. Remember, this is the amount of data I have. And then, since this file is clearly not empty, my optional .get was guaranteed to return something and not to throw an exception. But now what I've done is that I distributed all the elements of my uh, of my file, all the articles of my file, in a hash map with the key as the years of this uh, of this um, of those articles, the publishing years of those of those articles. And now, since I do not have a, a fine enough knowledge of, of my base, I cannot tell if some of the years will have any articles or not. So suppose some of the years are just empty. Or some of the years are, have, have articles with no authors, which is also uh, possible. Then, then for some values of my map, I might have some empty optionals. This, this I cannot tell in advance because I, I, well, I do not know this base uh, well enough. So what I need to do if I want to further, further process this map, extract max, etc., is guarantee that this map will work uh, as it is. Where does the problem come from? The problem comes from the fact that this get is going to be called here. 
on an empty optional. So I should not be calling it. Well, what is this collector creating uh, uh, as a map? In fact, if I, for instance, I could choose not to, to create this collecting and then let, let us do that. Okay, let us get rid of this collecting and then here. I have a different collector there. Okay, it will not work, sorry. If I, if I don't do that, instead of having a map of integers of an article, If I do not call this get, I expect to have an, a map of integers and optional of articles. Okay, this optional that get is just opening this stuff. Uh, it's a very bad idea to to create this kind of maps. Why? Because an optional can be empty. So creating a list of optionals or a map of optionals or an object with a field that is an optional is in fact maybe in fact very costly uh, and completely useless since those optional can be can be empty. So we should not clearly should not create this kind of map and store it as such in a, in, a, in a field or pass it to another processing or whatever. So this it's not a good idea to create this map. Now this optional um, object is really in our way, and I think that the right solution uh, to handle this is not to keep it as is. Uh, in nine we have if in fact I'm going to. Uh, comment this. We have a very nice method here, which is a stream on this optional. Quite, oh yes, because this collector, the type of this collector is not the right one anymore. So let me get rid of this. <clears throat> if I do not call, okay, I'm, I'm going to take that again. If I do not call this collecting and then here, okay, so do not call this optional and remove this stuff here for that to compile. Uh, this is going to be a collector that is going to return an optional of article. This should compile, right? Okay, it does not because I have this parenthesis it should not be there. Okay, if I do not call this optional dot get here, this this was the previous situation where I have a get here. Now if I call a stream instead of a get. like this. So I'm going to uncomment this code, put this parenthesis back, uncomment this guy, add the comma here, and change this optional for a stream. Import the class. Then I will be able to do some things because I have much more methods on the stream um, interface than on the optional object. Basically, an optional on a stream can be seen as the same object. Uh, the difference is that in an optional I can have only zero or one object, and in a stream I can have a stream, a stream can process more objects than that. But, but an optional on the stream are kind of the, the, the same object really. Um, the, different, the other difference is that the stream can be processed only once, and an optional can be processed uh, more than once. So what I would like to do if I uh, if I uncomment this code and remove this line, I have something that compiles. I am going to put this in a variable. Um, yeah, it's not this one. It's the other collector that takes a stream that I want to use. I'm going to put that in a variable. Yes, it's uh, the collect that I want to put here. This is my map. And this time if I run the code, I should not have the problem again. Okay, I have indeed the 60 values in the map, which is a reasonable amount of years between 1935 and 2009. But I have here streams that are empty. And what I want to do really is convert, uh, if, I, if I take this entry set Sorry, dot stream here. So here I will have a stream. Excuse me, of map entry. Okay, so I cannot call this again. 
here now I have a stream of map entry with this stream instead of inside this one. What I really want to do is transform, transform is convert this map entry with a stream in it that may be empty in a stream of map entry of integer and article. And I want to do that with a flat map because remember that in a, in, if a flat map is flattening an object that has no relation, this object will silently this object will silently vanish from the from the resulting stream. So if I'm able to do that, in fact, all the streams of article that are empty will not generate any map entry in the in the, in the final stream, and I will be able to create a map of entry, uh, a map of integer and article. With the with, without any uh, exception, as I just saw a few minutes ago. So this is this is really my goal: read, uh, create this kind of uh, this kind of conversion in, inside my stuff. And clearly, this is this is a job for mapping. So I have this entry set dot stream here. What I want to do is the following: uh, take this entry. Okay, so this entry is this one. Right. From get the value of that entry, and since this is a stream now, you see this is a stream. This used to be a, a, an optional, but since I use that now, I have a stream here. I can map it. All right. What do I have here? I have the value I want to get, and I want to recreate from that value. I want to recreate this object here. And this object is just a new, uh, simple, immutable, where are you? Here, simple immutable entry, with the key being the same key as the entry I have here. So entry.getKey. Okay. I'm going to add something like that. And the second parameter being uh, uh, the value, which is the value I have here, which is this value, in fact, the value I have in my stream there. So this is my value. Okay. Yeah, and this is my mapping. Doesn't compile because it's not this type is not the correct one anymore. Okay. What is this function I have here? Can I put it in a in a, Can I put it in a variable? Yes, I can. I'm going to call it function. You see that this function take this map and tree of integer and stream of article, which is exactly this type here, this type here, right? And return the stream of abstract. Uh, I'm going to call this map and tree. This is this is going to be to be uh, easier. And return the stream of map and tree Okay of the stream of map entry. So this is exactly what I need. This is exactly what I need to do. And if the, the nice thing is that if this stream of article is empty, what is going to happen? This entry.getValue return that stream will map that stream, but there is no value in that stream, in that particular value of that stream. So this map will not do anything, but it will not crash because a map on an empty stream just does not do anything, returns another empty stream. So in fact, if this stream of article is empty, the stream of map entry returned will also be empty. Okay. So now, if I'm using instead of a mapping here, if I'm using a flat map, okay, you should compile. If I'm using a flat map here, this stream that is empty as we saw in the slides in the first part, will just vanish, will not generate any value in the final stream. So this trick, this, this pattern, in fact, uh, is not opening the optional, it's keeping, just converting this optional in the stream. If the optional is empty, the stream will be empty. And this conversion from an entry with a stream in it to a stream with an entry in it, which will be empty if the, the, the first stream was empty, will just vanish using that flat map. So now, Q 
excuse me. So now what I have is a stream of map entry here, and I can just collect and collectors grouping by entry that get key. And this is going to be a map and list of map entry since I expect to have only one list of map entry uh, in it. What I can, could do instead of doing that is just recreate the map with the two map here entry.getKey and entry entry.getValue. And this time I will have the proper map. <laughs> the types of the map are kind of lost, so let us just recreate them. This was a map of integer. and article. Are you okay? I'm not okay. Yeah, kind of low. Where? Here? Sorry. Um, 58. Oh yes, you're right. Sorry. Thank you. Is it enough? It's not sure. Here? Here? Yes, you're right. Uh, article, no, um, integer and article. Thank you. It's, it's quite easy to get lost with these generics, right? <laughs> okay, now it works. Fine. Okay, so if I if I call this map dot size now, ah, called it correct. So I call this map dot size now. I only have fifty nine elements. Remember, I had 60 in the previous version, but one of those streams was obviously empty, and it has been removed uh, from, from, the, from the stuff. So we see that using this kind of trick, um, the optional element, in fact, doesn't, does not appear anymore in, uh, in our pattern. Uh, I think that a, a wrong solution would have been to try to put some kind of if optional is empty, or filter uh, the result, which is kind of the same, uh, on the empty optional to remove it before calling the get. Uh, there are a map filter and a flat map methods on the optional, but in 9 there is also uh, a stream method on optional that will convert this optional in a stream, allowing for, for, for better patterns. Basically, without this stream method on optional, this function here wouldn't have worked because it would have returned an optional. And since it returns a stream, uh, it can be passed at the flat map method of the stream API. This is, this, is the, this is something we can do in 9 that we cannot do in 8. But there are tricks to convert streams to optional uh, also in, uh, in 8, if you want to do that. Right. Uh, are we done with this example? I think we are kind of done. What do we have to do? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the slides. Maybe we'll come back to it. Okay, I didn't talk about the characteristics of an optional. There are three of them. Uh, put in a set. Uh, identity finish will tell uh, the stream API that the the finisher of, uh, of the collector. Sorry, I was talking said optional. I meant collector. The identity finish will tell the stream API not to call the finisher method because it's the identity uh, function. And if we are not uh, worried about it, it might stop working. We're going to see examples of that. And an ordered uh, state that the collector does not preserve the order of the elements. And concurrent say that the collector is thread safe and can be used uh, in parallel. Right. So 
How did we handle the empty optionals? First, we made, uh, we converted an optional into a stream, and basically we applied a, a very classical pattern when we have empty elements, whereas the, whether they are empty streams or empty optionals, which is to put them in a stream, stream of streams, and flat map, flat map them to silently remove all the all the empty streams. This is basically uh, what we did. So we created a map. We we in fact, our code was creating a map of K and optional of V. The first step was to convert that map into a map of K and stream of V with probably some streams empty. And this is going to happen very quickly if you, if you just set up collectors on, on non-empty streams and then use them as downstream collectors. We converted this map into stream of map entry of K and V just by streaming this map into a stream of entry of K and stream of V, and then flat map the result uh, and recreated the map using the two map uh, collector. And it worked quite well, which is very nice. All right, what about trying to join the streams uh, together? What I would like to compute in the following example is the the duo of authors that published the most together. Remember that we have like uh, more than 100,000 articles. We have probably tens of thousands of authors in it. So this is not something that we can brute force. I cannot compute all the pairs of authors from all the authors of this base and then check if they have written an article together. What I should do is really create the pair from the article together. What about putting that in a collector, then pass this collector as a parameter to a downstream collector to check for the authors that published the most together in a year. And we are going to use a, a, an API I have published on, uh, on GitHub for that called the streams utils that will do the crossing uh, for us. So what are we going to, to proceed? Uh, we have, uh, I just set an example on, on two articles. So Ghent Quarch uh, beyond, uh, published Beyond MP, the Q-set phase transition. And Ghent, whose processor watch and morphing, uh, created, uh, wrote another article called Combining and Stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is, for all the articles, get the stream of authors. And from that stream of authors, create a stream of pairs of authors that publish together. So the first green stream, which is the stream of the authors of the first article, will generate one pair, Ghent and Walsh. And the second uh, stream of authors, which are the authors of the second article, will generate the following pair, Ghent Ouse, Ghent Prosser, etc. Uh, and I've got an API for that. And when we flat map all this stuff, we will have a, a stream of pair of authors that published together. And since we already saw how to construct, to, to create an histogram uh, from, by counting the elements of the stream, this will be a job for, for, the, for the SIP4 pattern we've, uh, we've already seen. Right, so let us do that. <clears throat> we are going to, where is it? This is this guy, this is this one, yeah. I want to close you, yes, thank you. So, uh, what I have is always, the, the beginning is always the same. This is the easy part, articles that stream, right? <laughs> uh, what I want to do is to map those articles. We are going to see what it gives. And here, I want to get the authors and get the stream of those authors. And this is the stream of the authors, and I want to create a stream of the pair of authors extracted from that stream. And in fact, I have... So I'm, I'm going to create a function, basically. Okay, that is going to take a stream of authors, of author, and uh, return a stream of pair. So my pair will be a map entry of author and author. So this is my function. So 
I've got my tree, my author stream. Yes, let us do that. And I got the factory method on this streams utils and factory class, which is called cross product ordered that takes that stream. Okay. And that takes a comparator as a parameter because I do not want to generate if if I gen if I have generated the pair AB, I do not want to generate the pair AA, which is obviously not a duo, and not the pair BA, which is basically the same as the pair AB. So this is why this is a, an ordered uh, cross product. And here I'm, I need to provide a comparator of authors, and I'm going to compare them. Yes, just using oops, just using their last name, just like that. So this is this is uh, some kind of cheating, but this, this code this code is available on GitHub. Yes, I should have downloaded the source. Sorry, this is available on GitHub, so um, it just just does the trick. And by the way, it's a Java 9 API. Okay, so this function, uh, I'm going to apply it. Apply this function to that stream here. And this is going to, re to, to compute a stream of stream, right? Because this function, in fact, is returning a stream. So I can directly use the flat map stuff here. And this is, uh, I'm just going to call that stream, right? And this is directly the stream of pair of authors that published together, because it's created directly on the articles uh, on the article themselves, so it's really the, the the best way to generate that stream. Great. Now, what I want to do is uh, just to collect. Didn't I create? A... What did I put in collectors? The duties, by the way. We haven't used it. Grouping by and counting. This is exactly what we need, right? <clears throat> and this is the function that identity, in fact. Yes, grouping by and counting function. This is, this is the, 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 the extraction I just did. And by the way, I could create another method from this one, grouping by self. What about I called grouping by self and counting? That should return grouping by and counting with function dot identity. Ah, come on. Sorry? I didn't hear you, sorry. <laughs> this is the classifier I should pass, right? Okay. Counting function classifier. Okay, I don't get it. This should be a T. Yes, this doesn't take a classifier as a parameter. Oh, was it just that? Apparently. Okay. So now, so now I can just group by self and counting. Ah. Grouping by self. Let's just fix that. Okay. Grouping by self and counting. So it's just the grouping by identity counting. This is nice. And <coughs> what I want to do now is just pass the collecting and then uh, collectors dot collecting and then, and I want to get the max by value in fact, which, sorry. Okay, and I think that in collectors util, I also created something, max entry by value. This is, this is what I want to do. Okay, correct. Right. Is that it really? Oh, yes, that's it. It's not bad. Huh? It's more readable like that, no? Just by using factory method, when it works. 
when, when you have all the time to have to do deal with the generics and make it works it's it's better to have that okay so let us call this entry so in, in fact this entry is the duo of author duo of authors that well this is the most seen i'm going to call it like that most seen duo of authors and i'm going to print out the result <coughs> Okay, so Mr. Kim and Mr. Lee published two, a little more than 200 articles together, which is nice. Uh, since this is a collector, oh, I've got this flat map here. So it's not quite a collector, but it turns out that in 9, I have a flat mapping collector, in fact, available. So what I can do is uh, command this code and call these collectors dot flat mapping okay the first argument is precisely the flat mapper which is this function great the second argument is the downstream collector and it's all this collector right and if I run this code it should work the same and this is indeed the case so the good news is that this is a collector I'm going to call it collector. Okay, so if I want to compute the same kind of thing uh, in a year, all I need to do is call this articles.stream, collect in a grouping by, pass my article dot get inception year as a parameter, and my collector as a downstream collector of this stuff, right? And this is going to, yes, and if I want to go one step further, because this is uh, going to create the map of the most seen, the most seen duo of authors that published together in a given year. And if I want to see uh, the max, which should be the same, I all have to all I have to do is construct the right comparator to uh, to extract the max from this guy. But of course, if I run this code, what is going to happen? I'm going to print map dot size, right? Because this might be too big. I don't want to to print it. What I expect to do is have the exact same problem as previous one. That is. Call the get on an optional on an empty optional, and, and this is this is exact same thing. Why? Because uh, if an author has been written only by one author, uh, this article will not generate any kind of pair. So this function here will return my the first function I wrote here is going to return an empty stream. Okay, so I probably have a bunch of empty streams uh, in my processing. Uh, if I take all the articles, there are so many that yes, I am pretty sure that many articles have been written by more than one author. But if I uh, distribute all these articles year per year, uh, odds are quite high that at least some of those articles have been written by only one author that are not going to generate any pair uh, in my stream. So I should be using the same kind of thing just to get rid of this. We can do that. So where is this collector? This collector is here. I'm going to uh, copy paste it, in fact. <clears throat> Where was it? Here. Okay, call it Corrector2. Call Corrector2 here. And then I should try to find where is my uh, where, where is my get. And my get, in fact, in the, is in this guy. The faulty get is just here. So I should inline uh, this method. inline this method one step further okay well, I'm sorry I don't think I need this guy no it's not this one sorry this one is okay it's 
excuse me, I should enlighten this one. And this is, this is the faulty get uh, I have here. So I can extract this in a function, in, a, in my finisher, here. This function is a little, a little ugly, we all agree on that. I'm going to rename this as map one here because I don't need it. And then, uh, since I do not want to uh, get uh, to get th this is this is the get method on the optional that is empty. Okay, this is the this is the optional. So I should uh, call stream instead of optional here. Right. So this is now a map entry of, sorry, this is a stream, okay, so in fact this map entry here since uh, returns, is the stream here, I think it is, stream of map and tree and so here I have a map of stream of map and tree here so this map is in fact is a map of stream of map and tree and now if I run this code uh, this time since I have kept in fact the empty stream all the empty optional in it I have the 60 value which is the same amount of value the number of data I have same amount of, of data I used to have here so now I should do exactly the same trick as the previous one, uh, which is here. I think that this should do the trick. I'm going to copy paste to, to comment out this code. Copy paste all this. Ah, I also need a function that I wrote, which is this one. By the way, this function is completely uh, generic, as you can see it. It does not depend on the type of the map. Oh yeah. Let's call it function two. Will it have the right type? I'm not sure. No, it doesn't. Because it's a uh, yes, it's a, not a stream of article. It's a stream of map entry of author and author here. Oh, all right. Okay. You know what? We are not going to use that function. We are going to to create that by hand. By hand. I'm going to paste this and write this function by hand. It will be easier than to try to, to get this. So this is a, an entry set of streams. So this is a, my, uh, my entry. And I'm going to do the exact same. That is, take the value here, the stream of those value. Get value should be a stream. So I expect that to have a map method on it. Now I'm looking at the other uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this, this, this entry that I have here. And this entry, I want to create an abstract simple immutable entry. I'm going to just give me some room here. Abstract map simple immutable entry. Here, I'm keeping the key and getting um, the value here. Entry that get value. No, I don't want this one precisely. I want this one. Get value, which is the long. Okay, so what is this guy? Ah, type is lost once again. <laughs> yes, is it this one? Yeah, it should be okay. So now if I want to extract the max, now I have 
solve my problem in, in a certain way. And if I run the code again, <coughs> uh, I've got a duplicate key in it. Great. Um, this, this code is faulty. Okay, I'm not going to fix it now because it's a little complex and I've got only 20 minutes left and I want to go to go one step further. But I think that you, you get the idea, the, the, this, this pattern is the same and, the, um, and you, can all, you, you can just open the, the stuff here. By the way, if I do a grouping by here, it will solve the, 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 the duplicate key problem, but this duplicate key come, probably comes from, uh, from another problem in that, in that code. Never mind. Um, I have only 20 minutes left and it's a little short. I hope I will have the time to, to do this. <clears throat> so what is interesting What is interesting in modeling all this stuff in a, in a collector? It's just that we can reuse this collector as downstream collector. And this, this is what we, what, we, what, what we just did. What about readability? For the, for the moment, we just wrote code that was really harder and harder to both to write and to read, probably more to read than to write. And to do that, we just try to extract code in variables and in the factory method, which is one way of tackling the problem, but probably not the best of the way. The, the problem, in fact, comes from the fact that if we want to compose two collectors together, the solution we have is take one collector and pass, as a, pass it as a parameter to another collector. So we ended up creating collector max by, collector grouping by, collector, etc. Uh, nested uh, in each other. And we all know that nesting calls like that just leads to very unreadable code. And this is what we saw. Uh, this is what we saw in the slide. So what about trying to get rid of that? And tr uh, sorry, and trying to, uh, to, uh, to write composable character. We're going to, to get just one last example, which is this one. We are going to get rid of these uh, articles and authors and stuff. Just to uh, just to to watch to watch this uh, to take a look at this example, which is much more simple. So this is the example we took in the slide. Here, what do I have? I have a, a map, a filter, and just a collection in the list, which is which is pretty pretty simple to understand. Now, if I want to write this with a collector, I end up writing this kind of code, and we saw that already. Collectors. Are dot mapping and I'm going to pass this mapping as a parameter string length then uh, collectors uh, dot filtering and I'll pass this filter as a parameter this is my downstream collector and then the last downstream collector will be collectors dot to list which is the last of the collector and this is going to to do exactly the same uh, I'm going to call this list two. This is going, to, this is exactly the same uh, result. If I run this code again, <coughs> I have of course the same result. And now that all this is in a collector, let us call it collector, right, whatever. I'm not going to use it anymore, anyway. I, I will be able to pass this data processing as a parameter to further uh, downstream stuff as we as we saw earlier and and you see that th this is exactly where the where the, the complexity comes from i've got a mapping that calls a filtering that calls a to list if i had 15 sets in my in my data processing pipeline the code would be really uh, absolutely uh, absolutely ugly what i would like to do really is in fact call it somehow in that way you see uh, having a strings dot stream then collect with the mapping and then collect with the filtering and then collect with this to list uh, to list collector this this would be and, and I would like this to return for instance list this would be much more readable and much more uh, easy, e easy to read. Now, if I want to, to write it in that way, what do I need really? I need a collect method. This collect method is defined on the stream API. This is a collect method I have. That should return an object able to have another collect method on it. So this collect method should itself 
return uh, a stream, which is only possible if the collector I pass as a parameter itself returns a stream. So this mapping collector, okay, uh, how can I, I'm going to write it, should be, um, in, in fact, pass as a, as a should, should have a downstream collector that it, it, uh, able itself to, to, create, to create a stream. And remember that we have those collectors to list that can uh, create lists uh, from collectors passed as a downstream collectors. We could try to do the same kind of thing with a streaming collector. So if this mapping is in fact, I'm not going to, to call that, I'm oh, sorry, okay, mapping, and I pass this as a parameter, where's my mapper, it's here. And if I pass these collectors, uh, I'm going to create it in collectors util, or maybe here like that, a new streaming collector. And this streaming collector would be a collector that creates a stream instead of collecting a stream. This would do, this would do the trick, really. So I'm going to create this class. Um, do I have it in util? This streaming collector is a streaming collector of TAR and it implements collector of TAR, which is nice. Okay, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. And in fact, since it is a streaming collector, the T will be the same because this will be in fact a stream of T. So I won't be needing uh, this R here. <coughs> and this A here is going to, I'm going to, to use a, sorry, in fact a stream builder, a stream builder of T as a, as a mutable container. So this stream builder will just be stream, uh, it will be the stream builder method. The combiner here We'll take two builders, builder two. Since a builder can be made a stream with the build method, I can take all the elements of that stream and put them in the first builder with this builder one dot add method and return, of course, below one. The finisher will just be my uh, stream, sorry, build, a, build a, the characteristics. I'm just going to return a new hash set here that is empty. And the accumulator is just that stream builder here add so this is this is a this is a a, color stream, a collector that just creates a stream instead of creating a, a list basically the same kind of thing and this can be passed here as a parameter to this mapping and if i do the same here I'm going to call this filtering uh, collector, pass my predicate as a parameter here. Oh, yes. Excuse me.
kind of lost the type of uh, <laughs> streaming character. Ah, yes, probably because it's always the same. Okay. It gives me the type of this guy, right? So now I should be able to. to ah, come on. Okay, so this is my mapping. Uh, I'll do the same for the filtering. Can't believe it. Sorry, I'm kind of fighting with this ID. Okay, so this is my mapping. Now I want to do the same with the filtering. Pass i i greater than three, three. It's a collector that takes integers as parameters, and this is a, a filtering, right? So this is my filtering, and now if I verify that this code is working by just passing this list dot three, I can see that I, I have reached the same the same stuff. So this is the first step. I've got a code. I, I've just transformed a nesting of calls from method to method to just chaining of calls, which leads to much more readable code. But now I'm not in the model I've written uh, so far because I've not really composed collector. What I've done is just chain the calls of collector using this streaming trick. What I really would like to do is the following strings dot stream collect and probably do some kind of it will it will not be mapping anymore but mapping then collect filtering and then collect to list and this would this would be really a composition of collector because this time this object here if I if I can do that this object here would be a real collector would be a real collector that I would be able to pass as a parameter to a downstream collector what pattern uh, do I have here uh, mapping is a regular collector and I want to then collect on this regular collector so clearly the real type of this mapping object here, which is defined there, uh, is not collector itself. It's something that has to extend a collector. Uh, so it extends collector and it also takes a collector as a parameter, as a composed object, since, um, since it, it needs a collector uh, to, to, be, to, be, uh, to be created. So basically, uh, this is in fact a decorator pattern. To, to do that, I need to use the decorator pattern. I'm going to create. A, um, I'm going to create it in an interface. Let us call it composable collector. Okay. It's an extension of collector of T A. R. It's itself something. Uh, we're going to to uh, have fun with generics here. Let us create those suppliers and stuff. It needs uh, a downstream collector to be created. Sorry, I want this guy to be an interface. I don't want you to be a class. So. All this is removed. Okay, I need to then collect as a parameter that also takes a collector as, a, as an interface. So this has to be a default method that is going to return a composable collector here. Tar, then collect. <coughs> And that is going to take a composable character as a parameter here, and I'm going to call it downstream. Okay. 
So now the trick is the collector I am in is a collector here, the mapping collector, that takes a string and returns an integer, right? So this this in fact is a string and this is an integer. Okay? If I check the the collector I am taking, it takes an integer and returns a it's it's a filtering, but it could also be another mapping. So this collector takes an integer here, okay, and could return, for instance, a long there, right? So this is, a, and the collector that is returned is a collector that is able to operate on, on uh, strings and will return the return type of this filtering here. So it takes a string as a parameter and is going to return a long there here. So I said that T was a string and R was an integer. Okay? And this is a long, this is a new type I need to define this method. Right, so now I can say that this is a T, this is an R, and this is another type, let us call it RR. So now I can return a new composable collector of all those guys. And the type here, I need to understand how this th thing is working, and I've got only three minutes for that, so it's going to be really fast. <laughs> First, I want to apply the mapping collector to my objects, and then, when this collector is fully applied on them, I want to apply the filtering collector on them. Okay? So basically, come on, the supplier is the downstream downstream supplier, doesn't change anything. The big consumer is also the downstream uh, accumulator. The combiner, because it's a big consumer, yeah. It's this one. The combiner is the downstream combiner. What did I do with the big consumer? Oh yeah. We messed up with the with the um, with the stuff. This is the downstream uh, characteristics. The only trick is that, and I won't have the time to finish, I'm sorry. And the, the only trick is, is here, since I am going, every, everything is going to be done in the finisher, right? So the, this finisher uh, will do this kind of thing. Um, it's a function. It's a function that takes the container that has been partially filled using this, this stuff. So this container, sorry. Excuse me, this should be a stream. If it's not a stream, it's not going to work. Uh, so this finisher here, this container is a stream. And it doesn't see that it's a stream, which is really great. <laughs> okay, I've got one minute left. I'm sorry, guys, I won't have the, the time to do that. Do I have it somewhere? I think I have it somewhere. just want to show show it to you really quick uh, is it here yes this is this is the the finished extended collector so this is this is the the, the then the then collect method that takes this extended collector uh, as a parameter the supplier is the same the combiner is the same and the the finisher in fact the final collecting is just done, done in the finisher. This is this is the trick 
uh, to, to achieve that. The, the, you take the finisher of the current collector, you apply it to the current container, it returns a stream because the, because the finisher in fact returns a stream, and you just collect this using, using this downstream. And this allows for the, for the, for the, to, to write on, and this pattern become, becomes possible uh, with, with this extension collector, which is a decorrector over the collector interface, you, we can compose collectors and, uh, and, and just create collectors without having to nest the call in, uh, in method calls. Sorry, I didn't have the time to finish this. Um, Okay, so yeah, the main issue was the empty stream and we saw how to deal with it. We also uh, could create an Instagram, uh, etc. So in conclusion, very, very, very quickly because the time is up, the, the collector API is indeed a, a very rich API, as you can see. Uh, the way it has been designed, uh, if you want to create collectors to process all your data, you have to nest things. So you need to decorate things if you want, uh, if you want to, to, to keep your code uh, readable. The nice thing is that it's quite easy to extend uh, thanks to this downstream collecting, um, how could I say, sorry, uh, to the downstream collecting mechanism. Uh, once it's written, it can be passed as a downstream to another processing pipeline. And I think that this is really the key of the, the power of this API, and that key, it can be made composable to improve readability. Sorry, I couldn't show that to you. I was a little short on time to, to, for that. The time is up, so thank you for your attention. I hope you found the, the talk interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, well, just grab my sleeve outside of the conference room. You can check the code of, the, of, the, of this talk, uh, hopefully fixed and completed on my uh, GitHub account in the next few days and the slides on, the, on my uh, SlideShare account. Thank you very much and sorry for being a little uh, out of time. Thank you.